How is it going everyone? It's Sam. We already made a video today going over some of the CPI and why you should get your money out of Binance or your crypto out of Binance. But I want to give an update because the market has turned. Uh, the CPI came out higher than expected, but now the market is actually looking pretty good. The markets are green. Some stocks are racing. I made a play this morning and added a little bit more to a couple different positions that I want to talk about. We also have good news for some crypto holders. So I want to go through a lot of that and explain why the market's up because I did a little bit of this explaining earlier in the day as well. But now you can really see that the market is uh, taking the CPI print really positively, as I said, possibly earlier this morning. Now, if you don't mind in the subscribe button underneath the video, if you like videos just like this, I really appreciate that. We're so close to 232,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate it because over the last couple months, we did see a lot of people filter out of crypto specifically because it was so tough. And we saw numbers actually drop for a month or two, and now they're starting to pick up. So if you want to join this channel, if you want to get the content that will give you the news every single day, whether the market's up or down, hit subscribe. So... Let's take a look. Bitcoin is up 2.6% in the last 24 hours. The whole market's up 3.6% and a lot of the altcoins are up pretty significantly. I mean, Cardano's up 10.1%, Polygon's up 7.3%, Solana's up 7.7%. A lot of crypto is doing really well. Now, as we can see here from Bitcoin's chart, uh, we on the one hour have started to pump back up and we're right at the same support line. Uh, that we saw over the last couple weeks. We had seen a touchdown support here once, and then we broke back through. And this is a line that I thought could hold as support. And if it did, it would be pretty positive. But as you can see, we broke down underneath it. Now we're hitting it as a resistance line, but still, we're still above 22,000, which I think is positive. If we break through this and use it as support again, that will be positive. Ethereum, it's looking pretty good too. It, when we look at Bitcoin or Ethereum, we have the same chart. We're right around... 9 a.m. we start to pump up and you can see we start to pump up pretty aggressively here and then we've just been kind of consolidating since then now some stocks are up a lot too i mean uh, tesla's up seven percent for the day and it saw a very similar pump around the same time and i think it's due to a couple different factors first of all as i said cpi came out higher than expected uh, and that was taken as a pretty bad thing right when it happened. Uh, then we started to recover. Then we fell back down again. Now we're recovering again. I think there are a couple different reasons why this is actually uh, a decent print or why the market's taking it as pretty, uh, pretty good and not actually the end of the world. And while we are starting to see inflation this month and the last couple of months coming a little bit higher than expected, especially after being revised, First of all, the largest contributing factor is housing to the CPI, and it was up 0.7%. We know that it's coming down at some point, but this last month, it was quite high still. So that might be one of the first reasons that we're actually seeing the market react this way is because we know well the largest contributing factor is going to start falling down here soon. We also got news from the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia President Patrick Harker, and he said that he believes policymakers will need to raise rates to some level above 5% to counter inflation that is retreating only slowly. Now, that sounds pretty negative, but when you look at some of his other comments, it sounds a little bit more bullish, and it just depends on how you read it. I do think that we will need to continue above 5% in 25 basis point increments for a while. So he's saying, hey, I'm not expecting 50 basis points. Still, I think we should continue 25 basis points. He says, at some point this year, I expect policy... Uh, the policy rate will be restrictive enough to hold rates in place. CPI data shows that inflation is coming down slowly. So it just depends how you take it. It could be taken as it's coming down slowly, like too slowly, or it can be that it's still coming down just slowly. And I think this is a little bit positive. I think even if uh, the other Fed presidents are saying that it's still coming down, we're still playing 25 basis points, that provides some stability to the market. When we get news like this, of the CPI coming in and it's higher than people expect. The question is, what does the Fed think? Now, when we get clarity, it provides the market a little bit of relief. As we can see here, the VIX or the basically the volatility index is falling down throughout the day. It's down 8%. People are less nervous. Investors are less nervous. 
So there's less of a question of if the inflation rate's going to come in really high and just nuke the market. Now people realize, okay, I need to go long again. I need uh, some more positions in risk assets, which is why I think we saw a move in the market. And we're starting to see the overall market move up as well with the NASDAQ up uh, about 0.6%. The S&P 500 is a little bit positive on the day. That was still negative, but we're starting to see more of these risk assets do quite well. I mean, Bitcoin's up 2.6%, as we said. Now, there is some news that I want to talk about, some good news for a specific crypto, and there's some good news for a specific stock, and I want to talk about what I added here today. Let's talk about the crypto first. The Polygon Hermes team and co-founder whose long list of contributions to ZK Tech just got a bit longer. Polygon ZK EVM mainnet beta will launch on March 27. So they've already had it on the testnet. Now they're moving it to the mainnet beta. And this is going to be great. This is pushing up Polygon today. It's up 7.3%, much more than the overall crypto market. And uh, we're going to get new details over the following weeks. But the launch is set for March 27. Polygon, an Ethereum scaling solution, picked March 27 as a date for their ZK Ethereum virtual machine beta mainnet to go live. Uh, They did not specify what the beta network will include, but share the team will be releasing more details leading up to the March date in the coming weeks and that security of the network will be of the highest priority. ZK technology can be seen as a major improvement for blockchains and cryptography aimed at increasing the speed of transactions and reducing their costs. Now, they have obviously been already a much better solution than Ethereum for scaling and for reducing costs. I've used it a a lot over the last year or two, and you can do transactions for a penny or two pennies. Uh, Still more than something like Solana, but still so much less expensive than Ethereum. So if they can get down to, you know, a tenth of a penny or something like that, that'd be really beneficial. Um, since the main net or since the test net went live, this is back uh, a few months ago, I believe. Yeah, back in October, over 75,000 ZK proofs have been generated and 5,000 smart contracts have been deployed according to their blog post. So basically, uh, Polygon went live with their ZK EVM test net, which deploys the Ethereum virtual machine for its ZK rollup, allowing Ethereum developers to move over their smart contracts from the main blockchain without having to reprogram them in a different language. So this makes it easier for developers, also improves the user experience for people actually uh, using the blockchain for transactions. So this is great. This, I think, will continue this narrative with Polygon that it is the layer one or layer two, it's kind of a layer one, uh, to be in for the next cycle, especially with some other cryptos starting to weaken a bit, like BNB with some of the news from Binance recently and BUSD. I think Polygon will have a real narrative. It should beat out Dogecoin. Honestly, I don't want to talk bad about Cardano because there's so many fans, but I think Polygon is more useful than Cardano now. It's more useful than XRP now. It's more useful than, I don't want to say it's more useful than BNB, but it's right up there with some of the top cryptos. And I think this next cycle will be a really interesting one for Polygon. So if you don't already have some Polygon in your crypto bag, you might want to consider it. And that's something I've been saying for months since Polygon was much lower than it is now. It's one of the four cryptos I hold too. We got some news from Ford. They halted production and shipments on their new electric F-150 Lightning due to potential battery issues. They paused production on shipments of their electric F-150 Lightning. Hopefully they get through this pretty quickly, but it is sending Ford stock down about 1%. Uh, it's, It's really difficult to produce electric vehicles, even when you have produced other vehicles, ICE vehicles. It's a totally different game. So uh, hopefully Ford can get through this. I don't wish anything bad on Ford because honestly, it would be nice to have some competition for Tesla, either just to push them a little bit harder or just so that people have another kind of vehicle that they can get besides a Tesla. But we got some good news for uh, Tesla here today, obviously, because they are up 7% basically. Uh, But we also got news Uh, from Ford yesterday that they're going to cut 3,800 workers. So a rough 24 hours or so from Ford. But at the same time, they could probably be up if it wasn't for those battery issues because of the good news that's, I think, pushing up Tesla. But Tesla, as I said, up 7.2%. Obviously, 
investors are moving to risk assets. There are a lot of reasons to buy Tesla. I've talked about Tesla a lot over the last month. So if you don't watch every single video, I would suggest it because I've been ringing the bell on Tesla uh, significantly and it's my number one holding. And it's up 100% in the last month, uh, over 100%. And I've been buying this whole time. Even today, I was buying. I've been buying Tesla today. I bought uh, not as much as I usually do. I bought a little bit though. I did dollar cost average into it. Uh, and I bought this, I bought some VOO. I also bought some Vici stock as well. So those are my three purchases today as part of a dollar cost average that I've been doing into uh, the equities market. But uh, I've still been buying Tesla this whole time. And something that's really interesting here too, is you can start selling premiums. If you think that Tesla is getting a little bit spicy and I'm looking to do this soon, but I, I still think there's a lot of room left for Tesla to run. So I'm a little bit cautious, but if you if you think Tesla is getting a little bit frothy, you can sell some covered calls. Right now, for example, uh, I think it was about a $230 uh, strike price for next week. We're selling for $225 or so. Uh, so you can still make a lot of premium. 5% upside on the spread there and a $220 premium. It's pretty good. Uh, a lot of that's due to the volatility in Tesla stock. So uh, definitely, if you haven't already considered Tesla, I would suggest looking at Tesla, not just because of the spreads, but because of the great economics behind it. Look at their quarterly uh, stats here, right? Revenue going up significantly. Uh, price action going up significantly over the last uh, couple quarters as well. But EBITDA going up consistently, free cash flow, their return on capital employed is just insane. I mean, we're talking about 7% a quarter or when we look annually, because that's a lot more, that's a lot easier to look at. 25% for 2022 and ramping up over the last five or six years, they're able to take cash and make more cash with it very efficiently. The free cash flow looks great too. And unlike a lot of other companies, they aren't diluting shareholders significantly. Their stock-based compensation is $1.56 billion versus $7.5 billion in free cash flow. And as you can see, it's actually going down. The last year, it's gone down. So I still love Tesla. I know that it's getting a little bit more expensive at a PE of 53, but keep in mind, it was half this expensive a month ago. So I still really like Tesla over long term, and they're one of the few companies I think they have so many different growth uh, drivers for them, and there are so many out there, so many different things you could point to. And now EU lawmakers just approved a ban on new fossil fuel cars by 2035. They're a little bit more uh, progressive than we are here in the U.S., but this is, I think, driving Tesla today. And if it wasn't for Ford's kind of screw up with their electric uh, battery, I think Ford will probably be up too. This is causing Tesla uh, to move up a lot. And obviously, like I said, just a huge turn to risk assets as well today. But I continue to add to Tesla. I still think that there's a lot of room and there's still volatility, right? We could fall down to 150, 100. <laughs> Who knows? Something bad like that could happen, especially if numbers get worse for inflation or we continue to move up interest rates even higher. But I think a lot of the weak hands have been flushed on the market. And I think if you just hold on for a few years, the Tesla will continue to pump up uh, these this revenue and free cash flow and EBITDA. And especially if we get out and the Fed does have this soft landing that they're hoping for, I could easily see Tesla pushing up another $100 a share. Easy. But let me know your thoughts on that underneath the video. I don't want to get people too excited. Uh, George Soros also snapped up some Tesla. He bought Tesla and added to his position. He has about $66 million worth of Tesla as of now. And he added 270% as the stock plunged in Q4. So he added a lot when there's a lot of pain in the market. And if you don't know, George Soros is a famous investor worth nearly $10 billion. People look to him to see what he's doing because he has made some big calls, uh, shorting the British pound, almost bankrupting the government. And he profited a billion dollars. This is back in the early 90s. So a lot of people think that he is someone good to look towards. Now, let me know if you've bought any crypto or any stocks recently. 
I've been adding to my stockpile consistently, but with crypto, I've been a little bit more careful. Last week, I did buy some Bitcoin, but I've been careful on altcoins. Uh, Phantom and Polygon and Ethereum and Bitcoin are the four cryptos I hold right now. And Phantom actually was a pretty decent buy. I think it's up, yeah, 11%. 11.5% in the last 24 hours, making a big move, Polygon making a big move. I've looked at possibly trimming them, but I still think that they have a little bit longer that they can run, assuming uh, some of this data that continues to come out is okay. I think we could see a little bit more of a pump in crypto. So I'm a little bit cautious about selling too early. I'd actually like to add to these positions, but I do think Bitcoin dominance will move up at some point. And with all the regulatory concerns, I mean, that was what, yesterday? People were concerned about regulatory issues. Uh, we could see see some of these altcoins fall back down. Remember, everyone gets excited when the market's moving up. There's always a narrative for it and everyone gets worried when the market goes down and there's always a narrative for it. So don't get too crazy. Keep a level head. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Happy Valentine's Day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.